Hey guys, Dave Android here. What I'm going to show you today is a pretty effective technique of denoising your DSLR footage. And it also decreases your render time because it's not trying to perform the uh, effect on all your footage and you don't even have to use a third party plugin. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I wanna take this footage that I have here and drop it into there we go, right into our composition. And as you can see, it's fairly noisy. You can see the, the artifacts there. Those little uh, blotchy squares all over the place. So anyway, what I need to do now is come up here, edit, duplicate, or control D, or command D if you're on a Mac. Uh, and then the other thing I'm going to do is go into layer, new, and then adjustment layer. I am going to slide that between the two footage layers and just to make this nice and easy I'm going to hit enter right here, change this to denoise. Okay, now what you have to do is come up to the top copy of the footage, come over to effect controls and now I'm going to come over to effects and type in tint. So what we're attempting to do here is just create a mat. Um, as it stands, we'll just leave this the way it is. Map black to black, white to white, perfect, 100% on the tint. However, as you can see, there's a certain grayscale in there. We have some blacks, some lighter blacks, eh, the grays. So what we'll do is co come into levels, all right. Drop that on the footage. And the idea here is to create just a black and white image. Uh, and what I mean by that is, let me go ahead and slide this over. I'll bring this one in. Slide this one this way. Bring this here. Now this can be adjusted later, but I'm just going to show you what we're planning on doing here. And let me uh, back out a little bit. All right, so this is with levels off and you can see what I'm getting at now. So let me just adjust these a little bit more. You actually do wanna get these really uh, fairly close. Okay, and that looks good to me. So um, let me drill these up here, there we go. Uh, however, it's not really a smooth transition. So what I'm going to do, uh, just so that it is, is come in here, pull up a fast blur. And let's give it about a five on the blurriness. Okay, and I'll show you what that did too. Let me toggle that off and on. Just because you don't want a distinct line between your effect and what's not happening in the effect. Essentially, as I said, what we're going to do is create a mat. And what will happen is anything within the certain color, as far as the black and white is concerned, uh, will allow the effect to come through, which is the whole point of this. So any areas that are black aren't going to have the effect. Uh, any areas that are white will. Now the next effect that I want to add is an invert effect. And I'll show you why in a moment. So let's go ahead and drop this on the footage. And as you can see, it flip flops the image because what we're doing here is once we choose the layer style at the bottom, that will tell the system what to affect. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. But essentially what I said before, we're looking at the white, it's going to affect the white. The black areas won't be affected. Now the reason we chose the levels effect is because that adjusts the light levels. And in this case, as you may already be familiar with, the dark areas of your footage will be the noisiest. So that's the ones that we want to target which is great because now you can come back into levels 
And if this mat isn't encompassing all the dock areas of your footage, you can obviously go back into the levels and slide it over so that anything you want, want to be affected, that's when you can make the adjustments, which part's white, which part's black, things along those lines. So here we are, we have the footage. We're actually not going to touch the bottom copy of it. Uh, as you can see, all we're looking at right now is a black and white image. However, what we'll do is come in here, turn the eyeball off, now we're back to the normal image, which is perfectly fine. Let me go down to toggle switches and modes. So now I'm going to change the track mat into luma mat. Now, as you can see, nothing changed, but just to show you what it's doing, let's come over into curves. And I'm going to drop that on the adjustment layer. And now I'm going to boost. And as you can tell, and let me go ahead and turn that top layer back on. Only the areas in white are being affected. The black areas aren't being touched, which again is great. Let's say you have a scene where you have a video of a person they're perfectly lit, but behind them is dark and noisy. Now you cannot bother with the person. With other software, as you may have already experienced, what you'll do is run the foot, the denoising on all the footage. And then of course they give you the sharpening to kind of compensate, but you're almost playing like a seesaw act with it, where you bring down the, the denoising portion of it, bringing up the sharpening, Either one may be too much, but in this case, you can leave it uh, basically unscathed. So in this case, we don't need the curves. I was just trying to show you what areas you were affecting and just to sort of prove the point. Again, any area that was white, and I'll highlight that again, is the area being affected. So how does this help us? Now what we can do is come over here, come into remove grain. Now, as far as the preview region is concerned, let me go ahead and drill this down. Let's put the center right here. As you can see, there's supposed to be a box there, but because we have the mat, it's getting cut off. So let me put the box right over here, and there we go. Now, this is a lot easier than you may think it is. This doesn't get used much because of the popularity of other denoising software, but let me show, we, show you what you can do. I'm gonna come down to sampling. Now we're not gonna choose automatic. As with most things, automatic is not the best way to go. So let's go into manual. And there you can see all our sample points. Not really effective. It's choosing portions we didn't even include in the mat. So let me go ahead and change this to four. We'll just use four samples. Sample size 24, that should be fine. Noise sample points, okay? So what I'll do, come in here, I'll put one maybe here. The intention here is to move these two noisy parts of the footage. Let me go ahead and, yes, perfect. So I'm going to put one right here and the last one we'll actually put right back on the toaster. Okay, so we have our noise points, we have our region, our preview region, so and that looks good. I'm going to change this from noise samples back to preview. Okay. 
And let's get in here a little bit. And you can sort of see what it's doing already. Uh, right around that preview region, you can see all those blocky artifacts. In there, not so much. So, how can we make this more effective? We can actually leave these settings here. I know you're looking at this and saying the noise reduction is only at one. Why don't we bump that up to a higher number? As you can see, it goes all the way up to five. You don't have to. The passes control most of the work that has to be done here. Now for the multi-channel, what we want to do, I'm gonna drill that down to single channel. And as you can see, we have the red, green, and blue. Now, in After Effects, it will show you those channels and we can see which is the most noisiest. Most of the time, with DSLR camera footage, it's going to be the blue channel. So let's just go through that red channel. That's relatively noisy, as you can probably see. Green channel, still pretty noisy. Blue channel, it's, it's everywhere. It's just one big blob of a mess. So what we can do here is actually let's change that back to multi-channel. Let's leave the red and green at one because they were relatively close as far as the intensity. So let's change the blue to two because it's worse. And then what I'm going to do is do a little bit of unsharped mask in this case. I'll just put it at a 0.5 with only a one for a radius. We'll leave the fine tuning and the temporal filtering alone. Obviously, depending on your footage, you can mess with those. But this, I would have to say, is already off to a good start. So let's go ahead, go to RGB, and let me go ahead. And as you can see, it's not entirely cleaned up. But considering what we had to start with, that is a lot cleaner. And again, stuff over here like the faucet, not going to be touched. So if you want to throw sharpening on top of this, you could and it will sharpen the original footage. And it won't sharpen the footage that you don't want to be sharpened, which in this case would be any area that you affected with the denoising portion. And in a moment, I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's essentially the same technique, but what you'll do is take that mask and kind of reverse it. So just to see what this has done, let's go ahead and take it off of preview and go to final output. And as you can see here, it's done a really decent job. You probably can maybe add some more to the noise reduction settings, maybe change that to four passes or something along those lines. But if you look in the corner of the toaster and above the character in this black area right here, you can see how much of this has been affected. And what I'll do is toggle that off and on. That's on. And that's with the effect off. Now, if you actually look at the character, he's not being affected whatsoever. Okay, so now we've denoised our footage. We can actually leave it right there. If you're comfortable with that and the rest of your footage is sharp and you just need to get rid of the noise, you're pretty much all set to render that out. However, if you want to sharpen your footage, the most effective way I've seen using this technique, using my technique here, is opening up a new comp what I'll do is come back into the project. I'm going to drop that one right there. And then I'm going to add another adjustment layer right in there. What I've done is already, as you can see, I've already created a mat here. And what I might do in this case is actually expand this a little bit. So let's go into effect controls, pull this up. This should look pretty familiar. All right, 
that's pretty good because I wanted to get that entire uh, faucet there, that little handle. All right. All right, that's pretty good. So let me just drill these back up. And as you can see, I didn't add the invert here. So we'll leave that there. Come down to toggle switches and modes. Come over here to Luma Mat. So right now, as you can see, just to give you a summary, we have the footage on top, which we dropped into a new comp, essentially doing the same thing that we did in the other comp. We have an adjustment layer, but this one's going to be used for a different purpose. And then we took the comp that we just had where we denoised the footage, and we threw that at the bottom, which is sort of the duplicate footage as we saw in the other comp. So what are we doing here? I'm going to select the adjustment layer, come over to Unsharp Mask, and just to keep things nice and tidy, what I'll do is come down here, hit enter, change this to sharp. Let's give this, uh, let's say maybe 110 and drop the radius down maybe just uh, a little bit to 0.7. Toggle that off and on. Might be a little hard to see in the screen capture, but uh, let me actually increase that to 125. Not bad. Again, off and on. Okay, off and on, all right. But again, what we'll do is come over here. Let me show you the mat. Black areas are not being affected. So let me toggle the, you know, keep an eye on the toaster here. Turn it off, on, nothing's happening. And the same thing with uh, Lightning McQueen there. We're gonna, let me toggle that off. And now he's sharp, off, and on. So there you go. Now you can selectively sharpen and selectively denoise your footage, which I think is extremely efficient because with other software out there, like I said, you're affecting the entire footage. So using this technique, you don't have to spend the extra money, and then you also get the areas you want selected, which also, as I mentioned at the beginning, is going to lower your render times. Because even though you're still running the effect on the software, it's not trying to denoise every frame, the entire frame. So hey guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Give it a like if you like this. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks.